This is the lesson video for Chapter 7, Part 1. Welcome to Database Management. My name is Jose Gomez and today we're going to cover Chapter 7, Displaying Data from Multiple Tables. In this chapter we're going to cover the sections Write Select Statements to Access Data from More Than One Table Using Equijoins and Non-Equijoins. Join a table to itself using a self-join. View data that does not meet a join condition using outer joins. And generate a Cartesian product of two or more tables. In the first section, we're going to cover types of joins. Joining tables using ANSI SQL syntax. Qualifying ambiguous column names. The natural join clause. The join using clause the join on clause, and way joints and additional join conditions, and non equi joints. We first come to types of joints. We have three types of joints, inner joints, outer joints, and cross joints. Inner joints use natural join using and on in their syntax. And we're going to cover these in, um, in future slides. You also have outer joints. Uh, sometimes tables share a do not share a perf perfect relationship, where every record in the source table can be matched to at least one row in the target table. It is it is occasionally required that rows with non-matching join columns values also be retrieved by query. And let me go to SQL Developer to show you an example. If we go <coughs> to the employees table in SQL Developer and we go to the department ID, there's one person that does not have a department ID, uh, Kimberly Grant. And if we try to join employees and departments table, we would have an issue with, uh, with this person here because they don't have a matching record or a correspondent record in the departments table. That's where uh, outer joints come in and I'll show you those in the in future slides. Now we have cross joints. Uh, in this case the join creates one row of output for every combination of source and target tables rows. So here we have table 1 has 10 records. Here we have table 2 has 10 records and let's see let's and if we create a cross join, we're going to get every possible combination of these two tables, so we're going to get 100 records. All right. So you multiply the number of uh, tables in each row, and then you get the results. Okay, this is the syntax uh, for joining tables, and it's it has a lot of options. You'll see a lot of brackets, uh, so you see a lot of op. Uh, options. Uh, uh, this uh, syntax we have table 1 and column then we have table 2 and we get an, uh, a column so we get two columns for two different tables. Um, this is table 1 and all of this natural join, join using, join table on, all of that left, right, full, louder join, all of that is optional and we'll go through the through most of these in the, the next few slides. Uh, before we go into joints, um, we need to cover ambiguous column names. So what if you have two uh, two column names in the in each table that you're joining? So let me go um, this is the example that I have, so let's go to SQL Developer. So we here we have the fr uh, first join, and we're joining tables, employees, and departments. So if we go to employees, you'll see that we have a column called department ID, and we have a de uh, a departments table that we have a column also named department ID. So how does Oracle know where to get it from? So 
in our example we have column alias so for employees we give a EMP an alias for departments we don't have a column alias so this for column employee ID we get it from the employees table and then department ID since we're using it as a join condition we're joining departments employees and departments uh, using department ID so it knows that um, we can get it from either side all right as long as it's in the join condition okay then we get manager manager ID from employees table then we get uh, from departments we get manager ID so again we're putting employees table and departments table together and we're getting columns uh, from both tables uh, here on the manager ID we specify the table name we're, we're getting it from so let's run that and we get employee ID from the employees table we get department ID since the department ID is a uh, is our joint condition it can be from either either side and then we have manager ID manager ID is for the employees table and then manager ID and it's from the departments table All right. so we get manager ID um, and we specify where we want it from okay if we don't do that uh, we're gonna get an error message so this is the example with the error message. Here we have manager ID, but we don't specify where we get it from. Our second manager ID, we want it from the department's table. All right? So this is what's going to cause the issue. Again, department ID, uh, we specify uh, in the joint condition, so that's not an issue. This is the one that's going to be an issue. So we run it and we get an error message uh, column ambiguously defined that's a very common uh, issue when joining tables so the book wanted to show you um, how to avoid that and I think yeah, by you know uh, using this example or you know figuring out this example you can you can avoid that Okay, now we go to natural join clause. So here we're using getting all columns from both tables, and we're joining locations and countries. So let's go ahead and look at locations. Location has, let's see. Countries. Location has a country ID. And countries also have a location ID. Okay, country ID. And let's see what's also country ID. Alright. So what a natural join does, what a natural join does, looks for common columns, and uses those column uh, common columns to join. All right, so you'll have to specify the column to join the tables. All right, so we run it, and it use country ID to join um, to make the join right so this is very easy simple uh, it look as it looks for common columns to join tables and this is exactly the same but this is where the work clause we get all columns from locations and countries and we use uh, country country ID from locations table and we use country ID from countries and we use that 
to uh, to uh, in the work you we, we use a work clause uh, to make that uh, that uh, look that uh, direct uh, connection. So we run it, and it's going to be just like the what we got earlier. The columns might be a little uh, a different order, but it's similar. Here's another example, and we're joining we're joining jobs, and we are joining countries, and we're using a natural joint. So let's see, jobs and countries. Yeah, this one does not have a. Uh, does not have a does not have a, a common column so it's gonna use a it's gonna do a cross join because it didn't find any columns uh, uh, it didn't find any columns in common so it'll be just like this example here uh, it created a cross join so I multiply the number of records in table one by the number of records in table two and it got every possible combination. And again, this happened because it didn't have a common table. So if you look at countries, it has country ID, country name, country region. If you look at jobs, it has job ID, job title, min salary, max salary. So it couldn't find a natural join. So it's it's similar to running this query which is a cross join and you can see I don't know how many tables how many records were in each but you're gonna see there's a bunch of records. Uh, we got four hundred and seventy five and that should be the 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 total of the com of the multiplication of each uh, uh row its records on each table. Now we go to join using clause, and uh, let's go to SQL Developer. Here we join locations and countries, and we use it. We use country ID to uh, to join these two tables. So let's go to locations and uh, locations and countries so we have uh, in locations we have country ID and in countries let's show you here they'll go to country ID in locations and in countries we have a country ID so we, we use the country ID column to make the connection and join these two tables together, locations and countries. And again, we're getting all records from both tables. So we get, um, we get the information from both tables and they're joined by country ID. Okay, so that's uh, that's how you use uh, join using. Uh, we you put join between the the two columns that you're uh, joining, and you use the keyword using to uh, to state the column that you want uh, to join. Now we go to the join on clause. Again, we're in, in our example, we're joining two tables. We can join. Uh, we can join uh, more than two tables. I'm sorry, I missed the the bottom part of the join using clause. So let me step back a little bit. 
so this is the last example we looked at join using see this is the last example we looked at we can recreate the same thing but with the work class and stating the column that we want to uh, make the column we want to use for the connection so we're using country ID country ID from locations and we're using country ID from countries and we're joining location and countries and we run it and we get the same results and we're making a join using the word clause as the same as this here our previous example where we use join using okay now we come to the join on clause and we use a keyword join uh, between two tables and the keyword on and then we specify the column that we want to use for our join so let's go to SQL developer and again we're getting all tables all columns from all tables we're getting uh, departments, uh, stuff from the departments table. We use column alias D. We uh, are joining employees to employees table. We use uh, table alias E. And we're using, I'm sorry, we're using the keyword on to specify the column that we want to use for the join. And we get a department ID from the employees table and we're matching it to a department ID in the department table so we run this query and we get all columns from all tables okay so now we do the same thing but with the work clause and we're joining employees and departments table using column, uh, table aliases and we get department ID from departments and department ID from employees and we run that and we get uh, columns from both tables all columns from both tables okay so that's the join on clause now we go to uh, joining more than two tables uh, in this example, we're going to join four tables, and we're going to get uh, columns from each table. So we're going to join departments, locations, countries, and regions. Regions going to have a, a table alias an R. Countries uh, C, locations a D, an L. I'm sorry, and departments a D. And we're going to get. Uh, region name uh, from regions we're gonna get country name from countries we're gonna get city from locations and we're gonna get department name from departments so we're gonna use uh, join on class and for the first join for departments and locations we're going to use location ID that's available in both tables to join locations and countries we're going to use country ID also available in both tables and then finally to join countries and regions we're going to get region ID also available in both tables so if we run it we're going to get four different columns from four different tables and when I keep mentioning that uh, our relationship between tables is very important and this is one of the reasons why Okay, so that's joining more than two tables, in this case four tables. Uh, 
this is the similar example uh, joining four tables but here we're using uh, here we use join on and in the next example we're using join and using keywords again same thing uh, this looks a lot simpler uh, because we don't specify, we need, we don't have to specify both tables, both columns from both, from both tables like we do here. Uh, here we just say we're joining departments and locations, and we're using location ID. The next one we're joining location and countries, and we're using country ID. And the last join, we're joining countries and regions, and we're using region ID. So this looks a lot simpler, uh, easier to read, I guess easier to put together, and it's similar to the one ab above. Okay. So we get uh, four columns from four different tables. Now we go to non equi joints. Uh, and sometimes you you need to do this. Uh, I personally haven't come across uh, use for this. Um, you use the same thing. Here we're joining. Here we're joining uh, employees and jobs table, and we're getting a bunch of we're getting job ID from employees. Then we concatenate some text and we use last name. Obviously, this comes from employees. We use job ID uh, from, uh, from the jobs table. Uh, we give it a, a column a list of options and then we get salary from employees. We give it an alias of current salary. We get max salary from jobs. And we name uh, we give it a column alias of a uh, a potential max salary, and we use join on. But in case in instead of matching the columns, we use a mismatch. We say two times salary less than max salary, and then we use a work clause condition. And we say we're sellers greater than 1100, 11,000, and then we sort it by last name. All right, like I said, sometimes you need your columns not to match, and this is this is what we get, and this is the results. So. This is what we get is the country uh, current job uh, job ID and we get uh, we get uh, this, this long text about uh, that includes the last name and we get the current salary and then we get the potential max salary right like I said sometimes you need uh, to mismatch your columns and you can do that this concludes the lesson video for chapter 7 part 1